What's going on guys? We are back again. Back here with the 33. Uh, we're still waiting on O2 sensors to arrive. We're hoping they'll be here today. So um, once those are all, we can get the thing back on the dyno. So uh, before we left the other day, before we left you in the last video, we actually, um, we ran up the car again, or well, didn't run it up, but got it hot again. Actually narrowed down the leak we had at the back under the manifold. Uh, figured out where it was coming from so you knew exactly what we were looking at replacing when we got back here. So at the moment I've just drained the coolant out of this thing so I'm going to look at sort of starting on that. Zach is coming out today, he should be here about lunchtime and he is going to work on getting his new exhaust in and stuff. So if we can get his exhaust in, get this leak sorted out. Uh, once we get our two sensors back we should be able to get this thing back on the dyno now that we've got our gauge for our rail pressure. Uh, so we can keep an eye on what's actually going on for fuel pressure. So outside of that, I've actually got myself a software that's called ECU Talk. And uh, our boy Sam White over at Whitey's Wiring there has lent us a consult cable for the stock RB25 ECU. Uh, so what this software allows us to see is just our voltage levels of our AFM, as well as our TPS, all that sort of stuff. So even though there's nothing we can really do with the stock ECU as far as tuning goes, being able to see these is going to help us a great deal in our fault finding efforts to actually get this car running properly. So. I am almost 90% sure that it is going to be a fuel supply issue. I reckon that this pump is running out of pump. Um, obviously now we can we can see that. So so I'm quite sure that's where we're going to be with it. Uh, but at least now we've got that ECU Talk software and we can do that. Um, I was really never keen on actually buying it because again, I'm not a big fan of the stock ECUs in these things. So you know, for me it's always been, if you're working on a 25, it's always an aftermarket ECU. But, Big thanks to Sam for lending us that cable so that we can sort this car out. And uh, obviously the aim of the game is to try and save Zach some money at the moment so that he doesn't have to rush out and spend so much money on getting an aftermarket ECU. Because obviously I can't see what's going on with this car being an ECU issue. It's got to be something else. Probably something simple, like I said, like a fuel pump. So anyway, now that this thing is drained of water, I'm going to go, go ahead and replace that bit of hose that had a leak in it. It's got just a pinhole. Uh, the same way my 31 got that pinhole at the track that day and it was squirting water out like a geyser, that's what it was like. So replace that hose. Apart from that, we didn't have any other coolant leaks. So once we replace that hose, we'll make sure that we get enough water into this thing that it's properly bled up on the hoist before it goes on the dyno. Uh, Cause that was our issue the other day is because it's on the dyno, it's ramped up. There's no way really to bleed the system properly when it's like that. So we just kept water in it uh, just so that we could keep bending in the rings. But obviously being on a ramp like that, it was having an airlock up the back of the system somewhere and that's probably why we we're consistently getting those bubbles and when we were letting it cool it was drawing in a bit more water so hopefully uh once we get this thing sorted back full of water bled properly on the dyno with that exhaust in it that doesn't have a cat in it so there's nothing to really condense all that water um hopefully we are not having any more of those issues we had the other day and it's all systems go and we can get this thing running a bit more rich a bit more happy in the afrs and uh, see what sort of power it's actually going to be making. First things, we've got to move some stuff around in the yard. We've got a bit more work to do. Um, I'll take you around. Rex and Dad have been very busy the past couple of days moving some stuff around. So I've got to go give them a hand and then we'll come back and we'll get back into what we're doing here. Righto guys, so I've hopefully just sorted out this leak. I've got the starter out at the moment. I'll show you, it's um, that little, little piece. Oh. That little piece there that just joins from the block to that T piece where everything tees off to all the all the different places. That's what was leaking, had the little pinhole in it. Um, so as you can imagine, that was really fun to change. So you're welcome, Zach. <laughs> so this was a little culprit here, very swollen, obviously just a really old heater hose. Um, probably should have just replaced it while we had the manifold off, but didn't bother taking all the heater hoses off the manifold, just took the whole manifold together and put it straight back on. So um, real pain in the ass, I had to cut it just to get it off, but that just had a pinhole in it, which was just shooting water problem with those is you never find them like even if i hadn't cut that i guarantee you wouldn't be able to find that pinhole it's only when the system gets pressure in it and it starts shooting out water you know there's a pinhole there apart from that they're almost impossible to pick up so uh, like the other day we actually had to run it and get it hot again and get it to pressurize again to even find where the leak was so i put a new little bit of heater hose on there um, before i chuck the starter back in i'm just going to drop it down and fill it back up with water uh, just to see uh, the problem is I, I took obviously those positive pressure piece of crap clamps off never reuse those i always chuck them straight in the bin so i put two just hose clamps on it um obviously the problem is where it is you can't get at it with a screwdriver i prefer to do that because you can feel a lot better when they get tight so i've done it with a little one quarter inch drive ratchet uh the problem with that is 
it's really hard to gauge where you need to stop because if you over tighten them they can pop or they can actually squeeze and pinch the hose and if you don't tighten them enough obviously they don't uh, they don't seal properly so I'm pretty sure I've got them to both to a point where I'm pretty happy with them but I'm just going to drop it down fill it up with water and make sure it's not leaking from that new hose before I go chucking the starter back in so after that starter can go back in and um, I've been reading a lot of the comments on Zach's videos not so much mine because they're not out yet <laughs> but um a lot of these people who obviously have a lot to do with R33s have mentioned a few things, things like keeping the uh, heater core open when you fill it. Um, so I've got a few tricks to try. I do appreciate everyone's input because, you know, obviously we're not arrogant to say that we know everything. So um, there's definitely lots to learn, especially I've never really dealt with a 33 that's mostly stock like this. It's always, whenever I've done 25s, it's always either been in conversions, so in S chassis and stuff, and it's always been aftermarket everything. So. Never really had much to do with the stock 33, so it is interesting to actually hear from you people who have actually had a lot to do with them and give us some pointers that we may have overlooked. So, got some better ideas to make sure that this cooling system is properly bled up and properly full this time, so that hopefully we stop having those bubbles coming up and stop having it look like it's drinking coolant. When obviously, from the leak down tests, it's uh, nothing to do with the head, so or the head gasket. So anyway, I'll drop that down, fill it back up. So I got enough water in it that I was pretty confident that it wasn't gonna leak. So fingers crossed when it actually pressurizes, it doesn't, but I didn't wanna do them clamps up too much more because you risk splitting the hoses and doing other damage and other stuff, which is a real pain. So started back in, that was real fun. Um, so now it's time I'll actually drop it down. We'll get it running and try and actually bleed this freaking system properly. So I'll open up that heater core, get the heater gun on. Uh, get it started and try and really bleed up the system while it's level and try and get it properly bled. So that's going to be Nail's little venture. And then, um, yeah, hopefully Zach will be here soon. Zach can change his uh, exhaust out. He wants me to look at his seat as well, but I don't think I have the steel. So I'll have a look around. But um, And yeah, and then fingers crossed, O2 sensors rock up around lunchtime, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So uh, I didn't pressurize the system yet, but just spent like an hour just bleeding it up and it just keeps on bleeding. So again, I've never really had to deal with a stock 25 manifold. Uh, a lot of your views have commented saying that they are just a pain in the ass to bleed. So just spent ages bleeding it up and um, we're not getting any more of that uh, foaminess. So I dare say that foaminess was just that airlock in the system. Um, seems to be fine now, just gonna let it cool and let it sort of bubble down as it cools and then pretty much do it again and do the bleed process again. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll actually put the cap back on and nip up the bleeder and pressurize it and make sure that leak's fixed. And uh, hopefully that's that pretty much sorted. Uh, gonna leave water in it. Obviously, I'm pretty sure I explained in the last video, but we'll leave water in it for uh, run in, especially with these multi layer steel gaskets. Um, definitely best for them not to have that coolant because it can affect the sealing of the, of the gasket, the, the chemicals in the actual coolant. So always water just for run in. Um, so probably just leave it bled, leave it like that for Zach uh, with the run in oil in it and sort of let him just drive it home on that oil and that, that water and then he can sort out um, changing out the oil and, and coolant at home. So hopefully that's that pretty much sorted. So now we just gotta wait for the O2 sensor to get here to sort of see if this car's running correctly. When Zach gets here, I'll chuck on that ECU torque and just check what the voltages for the AFM and the uh, TPS are doing and just adjust that TPS back to 0 0.5 volts from the other day where we sort of messed around with it just to see if it would stop that hunting. Um, and that may give us just a little bit of indication of what's going on, but ultimately we've got to wait for the O2 sensors to get here to actually get it back on the dyno and run it up and double check fuel pressure and everything as it's sort of using fuel and running up to make sure that the uh, fuel's up to it. So Also, uh, the, uh, just before I went to try and just get, we had one of these uh, fittings on the firewall still leaking. Went to just give it one more nip up with the, um, on the hose clamp and it literally just broke what was left off it. So those classic plastic old Japanese brittle pieces of crap. I'm pretty sure they make uh, brass or steel ones that you can replace them with, but you got to do it from under the dash. Either way, that's Zach steel, not really mine. Um, so for now, we've just teed it up so that it's all there. It's just teed off so it can't leak, and that's not leaking at the moment. Awesome uh, at the moment as, as well, so that's awesome. So just while we're waiting for that to cool, Zach's still not here. Um, we sort of, Dad and Rex have spent the past couple of days moving stuff around, so move most of the H series stuff from back here so that it's out of the way and uh, clean up the paddock and started moving some cars around. So at the moment we've got like not a whole lot to sort of go on with. So me and Rex are pretty much thinking about uh, dragging up the Pintara and getting started on this LS car. Uh, won't be a super glamorous start to it, but may as well drag it up. We've got a, there's a heap of stuff in that Pintara that's like was put in there just for scrap sort of thing. Like the original front end out of, came out of my 31 and 
just stuff in there that needs to go down into the scrap pile. So if we drag it up, we can sort of grab, like fully clear it out, get everything out of it that we don't want to use, pull the series one headlights off. We can pull the door and guard off it. They can go down to scrap. We can put on our silo door and guard so that they're on the car, um, you know, get started. Once it's access off the hoist, we can actually get that thing on the hoist and sort out the diff in it. I've got to pull the diff out, pull those axles and center out and put them in my center and axles. So there's plenty of stuff to go on with it. So we're thinking about dragging it up here so that it's sort of up here and we can sort of start ticking away at it when we have time like now. So <laughs> uh, we may as well be doing it. So anyway, we'll uh, drag that up and get going while we we'll wait for Zach. Here we go, guys. Look at this, the official start to the LS car, I guess. It's underway. So as you can see, because we uh, nicked all the best trims for Rex's car, we've got to get around, try and find all the trims we have left over just to get trims on this thing. They're just gonna get painted the same color as the car. We're really not worried about it. It's just going to be a bit of a beater. Uh, but as you can see- It's not even gonna have door rubbers. <laughs> yeah, wants them? it's gonna have no like door seals or anything. It's gonna be just pure track hack. Uh, but as you can see, we've got all this stuff inside that all needs to come out. That can all go down in the silo now. Um, still got front suspension in here. Still got a back seat. Uh, got the front old front seat out of Rex's, which honestly can probably stay in this car. Probably gonna need that one. But all of this stuff can just get yeeted. Um, just find some, you know, some of these trims, whatever we got lying around. These trims, you can see this car's got a bit of rust in it. So, you know, really is just gonna be track hack this thing. Uh, got to pull, we still gotta pull the engine and gearbox out of this thing. Still got the CA in it. Um, so I still got the mighty CA in there. Uh, we, one thing that I had forgotten until Rex mentioned it was that I actually, Oh no, oh no, oh, 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 there we go. I actually pinched the booster and master out of this car for mine. Uh, I do recall because Luke actually kept the booster and master out of my car when he did his conversion. So gonna have to pull that out of the silo as well. I'm gonna have to go down and find, I've got a manual pedal for an S13 down there somewhere that I'll have to find to make sure it's gonna fit, uh, which it should do by all accounts, but still heaps we've got to strip out and do. Got to change out this door and guard, and uh, these can go down into the silo as well. Get rid of everything we don't want to use, and uh, get cracking. Start doing the old yeet! Yeet, 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 yeet. Uh, I might keep that actually. I need that for the boot. Don't know what that is. Mm, ashtray yeet. Radio. Oh, definitely yeet that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Eat that. Old front suspension. Probably can't do that with my bung arm. Old radiator could probably get yeeted. But I'm gonna yeet it carefully for in case we actually wanna use it. That is actually the right layout for an LS. So that may come in handy. I might just keep that handy. How to strip a car in 10 minutes. Hell yeah, boy. So also gonna have to cut the brake pedal and stuff. You know, standard manual conversion things. Got a whole tray full of crap here to make disappear. But uh, yeah, she's mostly stripped. We just chuck the stuff we might keep on the roof for now. But yeah, as I said, still gotta get the motor and stuff out of it. But anyway, all in the fullness of time, she'd be right. But yeah, for now also what I would like to do is what Rex is up to at the moment is just get the whole dash out. Just because it's going to make it so much easier to do things like the clutch pedal um, and the brake master and that, like all that needs to be done underneath the dash. It's going to be a lot easier if we can just get the whole dash out. But the dash pad will be going back in because obviously you need one for most scrutineering uh, reasons. So the dash pad will be being retained. Things like the glove box and stuff, even the fan box, we're not even going to bother having one. It is going just to be stripped bare. Righto, so we've got our dash out. She's uh, looking pretty nice and bare in here, so now it's pretty easy to get at things like that brake pedal so that I can get at it and cut it, try and install the clutch pedal, and obviously once we get our master and um, and slave and uh, the clutch and everything, it's a lot easier to smack it in. So, And then after we're sort of done, the dash pad can go back in, but that's going to be pretty much it. Uh, still got to do, obviously, the garden door and stuff, but got a big old pile of stuff to take down. But anyway, first thing I'm going to do is go and try and find a clutch pedal out of one of my Sylvia's and just see how it's going to sort of maybe fit. It's the same layout for the slave, the two posts. Obviously they're the same, so it's just a matter of how it mounts the rest of the pedal inside and what sort of shape it looks like in the 31. So just got to check all that. But apart from that, we're sort of getting to where we wanted to get to today. Wouldn't mind just ripping out the headlights in the front end that we're not going to use off it. Get rid of, get that out of the way as well. 
because all that sort of stuff can go in with the rodeo which can go down and disappear because it's all stuff we're not going to be using or looking for so no point in having it up here cluttering things up it can go down and go in the silo where it's going to be out of the way the scrap man can come get it all we're done all right so zach's messaged me as well uh he's waiting on his falcon wheels to come back so he's uh, they've only sort of just got there, um, so he's only just got his wheels back on his Falcon. It's now like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so he sort of messaged me, after, asked if it's still worth coming out, because I think it was going to stay out here again, but I just told him not to worry about it. We still haven't heard about our O2 sensors, we don't know if they're even here yet. Doesn't sound like they're even here, so I just told Zach just to wait till tomorrow. So uh, I'm just going to have something to eat, and then I'll probably do the same thing with this. We'll um, fire it back up and get it hot again. Bleed up the system again now that it's sort of cooled and then got hot again, we'll bleed it again. Now we'll uh, lock it all off and hopefully that's the system sort of bled that way we can actually pressurize it make sure that leaks fixed and be pretty happy that's properly bled for next time it goes on the dyno so that we don't have the same issues we had the other day right oh so it appears we've got no leaks as you can see there, we're getting back up to that sort of almost half on the temp gauge, which is pretty much where we were all the other day on the dyno. So um, it's definitely got pressure in it now. And it certainly seems as though we've sorted out all the leaks with this car, which is awesome. Also, it's actually properly level. All the leaks are sorted. It seems to be bled properly. Uh, we found just before when we were turning it back on. Now that the system is properly bled, we're getting none of that like bubbling stuff we were getting the other day, which is one of the things that sort of was maybe pointing us towards a head gasket issue. So. We're not getting any of that now. Um, after running for a while, it's not creating any more water in the exhaust now. Uh, between just turning it off to let it cool down and then starting it back up, it had condensation again. So it is pointing towards the fact that those, those two things were completely unrelated. And all we had was just condensation in the cat as we were letting it cool periodically. And also just an airlock in the system, which was causing that really like foaming, bubbling crap coming up in the water system, because that's gone now. So. You know, it's um, it's just one of those things as an engine builder. It's like as soon as you see those sorts of things, especially on a fresh engine you just finished your order, you always got to assume the worst and start fault finding it there. But you know, leak down tests returned awesome results as far as not only just the head gasket but the rings bedding in. Uh, so going off the leak down test, those rings have bed in really well. I'm really happy with that. Um, so by all accounts, this thing should be mint. We've got to get the thing running so that it's not so freaking lean. Which, like I said, I'm, I'm almost sure. It's either going to be, was a fuel supply issue, which now we've got the gauge so we can find out, um, or it could have just been the fact that that O2 sensor was already on its way out and would have been reading wrong as it was. Like it, maybe this thing isn't actually that lean. It might've been just that O2 sensor had been on its way out for a while, so. Because it was doing some funny stuff the other day when I had my Falcon on there. Like I would start in the run and the AFRs were coming like from the sky, coming down into the map. It was doing some funny things when the last the last time Rex had his skyline on there. So it could have just been that that sensor was just a bit funny and all over the place. But again, now we have the gauge in the rail so we can see the fuel pressure. We're gonna have a brand new O2 sensor. It's gonna have a different exhaust on it, which hopefully doesn't um, accumulate or condensate so much water. And we're gonna have uh, ECU talk, which is going to show us AFM and TPS voltage, which means hopefully we can fault find the A uh, AFM and TPS, confirm that they're okay, reset the TPS to 0 0.5 volts, and hopefully stop this thing from hunting at idle. And then as long as it's running right on the stock ECU setup, that way Zach can go and upgrade it as he wishes when he has the money, rather than at this time, I'm sure you can all sympathize that it's a bit of a, a struggle at the moment with everything going on to go and blow that much money on that sort of thing so that's just where i'm at with it again i wish i wish we had these o2 sensors i'd really like to get this thing back on the dyno and have a look again it's got fine the rail pressure is fine sitting there but you don't know until it's actually loaded up on the dyno so anyway all we can do is wait at least the water leaks are fixed righto guys so with that car's pretty much the sorters we're going to get it today with what we're going to do uh it's time to keep going with the ls car so at the moment we're just going to rip off the headlights, all of the front ends that's all Series 1, which we're not going to use. We're going to use Series 3 headlights, an infill panel, and some sort of custom grill to work with a Series 1 bonnet. But I don't need any of this crap. Try and get the condenser and stuff out. Anything here we can get out without pulling the motor right now, because we don't really feel like doing that right now. Um, to get into the Rodeo to take down to the scrap pile, we'll do, along with this garden door. And that way, I can take all this down to scrap, and in one swift lap, can do scrap run and get myself a clutch pedal while I'm down there and come up and get started on doing that. And we might, well, have a look, we might take down some tools to try and get the master and stuff out of the silo as well, because that's pretty much what's going to be next is, yeah, get this motor and box out, 
get the clutch and brakes side of things sorted. And look at painting it all. Get all the trims on and mask it up and flick a coat of paint on it. Oh yeah, who needs paint? That all looks fine. Look at the rust in this thing. Oh, rust is lighter than carbon, than carbon fiber. fiber. <laughs> Weight reduction, bro. Weight reduction. So anyway, lucky it's just going to be your track hack. Huh, not that worried about that. For this one, there's going to be no easy use in the footwell, so there's no need to worry. Until it falls in half. <laughs> Until the front falls off. That should be right. Hopefully it's not one where the front falls off. Anyway, I'm sure that we'll manage to um, break it before that happens anyway. Where's the 12? Oh, the 12's on that thing right there. Why? Look at that. Bit of rust converter. Good as new. We'll wake up tomorrow, it'll all be gone. Be like a brand new car. It'll be converted into a drift car. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Mint. She's looking a bit more bare in the front end now, with all that crap gone. Massive weight reduction, heaps of delete and stuff. We got a nice red guard, look how nice that is. Bloody beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous, really nice. Look at the amount of shit we have just pulled out of this thing. Oh, well. So much. What have you done? I oh, just have a bolt. We're only gonna have one guard bolt yeah. at the bottom here. Yeah, I'm not a wipe. Zip tight for all I give a shit. Just zip tight all. Anyway, this is exciting. This project's already moving along pretty quick. Whew. Look at us go. Look at some of this weight reduction. Oh, she's a good one. She's a nice one. So this is what I mean by like putting my engine combo in this and just drive it until it's dead and then just pull the combo back out and just scrap the shell. <laughs> scrap what's left. But it's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun in the meantime and it's gonna give us another car to have done very soon. Which is good, because as soon as this coronavirus stuff's over, I wanna be shredding Archerfield again. Oh, look at that. We even got a handle. Um, sweet and sour surly. Bob's yarny. Look at that. Just punch it. Just shit. punch it. Oh, I gotta wind that window up. Oh no. We need to find a window winder. Oh no. Oh dear. I think, I think we've got an issue. What you stack on? Oh. It's just sitting there. The window's fucked. I don't think it's meant to be doing that, eh? Um, this gap's getting a bit big. Alright, we've got it sorted. We've got a window again. Crisis averted. The other thing I was looking at is, because this thing seeing is it has no win no mirrors on it now anyway, um, I'm thinking what we do is just plate this bitch up on both sides and just run fender mirrors. So, smash like the fender mirrors because they're gang. I reckon fender mirrors on the old LS car will be gangster. Sweet. I'm really excited about this car. Now we've got to try and fit all this crap. And ha! Yeah, just the booster. Anything and the... you want to leave easy to get at, like the alternator and... Yeah, probably should. Right, oh, so I managed to pile most of the shit in there, but you can't open this door because it'll all fall out, but that's pretty lucky because you can't actually open this door from the outside anyway. Rex pulled off the master and booster, so we have a master and booster for the LS car now. Uh, we'll just drag this bonnet back up. Beautiful. Uh, the rest of the stuff that's in there today can actually go in the scrap trailer. And the other thing I've got to do now is while I'm down here look for a brake uh, clutch pedal, which shouldn't be too hard, it should be in one of my Sylvia's. Righto, booster, master, clutch pedal. Also got the last two bits of trim we were missing, which is just the very top for the rails, for the gutters. Uh, we don't have any tr like actual clips for them, there are still clips on the sealer which we might be able to try and get off. Uh, if not, we're pretty happy to just try and fix them however. We can just elastic it Yeah, just still looking them for all it matters, it really doesn't make much difference to us with this car. Um, so yeah, I suppose we'll see if that... Uh, pedal fits in. That's going to be the first thing. See if we're at for having to um, modify that. Uh, we also got the front brake line that's missing off this car. Pretty sure I remember I took the front brake line that's missing for my car. I think that's what happened. But either way, we've got one there now, so we're all good. We've got brake lines. And the rear brake line that's missing doesn't matter because we're going to put a pass-through type hydro, which means it's going to be braided line all the way to the back. So we've got this thing pretty much nutted out as far as uh, the ideas for the build goes. Should come together pretty quick. Right, oh guys, so we have a clutch pedal. Obviously, it's not going to stay where it's sitting. Uh, we're going to have to extend it and sort of put a bit more of a dog leg in it so it's down around here. And obviously, do the old cut the brake pedal trick. Again, it's not. We're not really worried about any of the stuff because it's only a track car. So we will cut and extend and weld and do whatever we need to do. Whatever's the quickest way to make it work. That's how it's going to get done. Uh, but 
Sylvia clutch pedal does just sort of bolt straight in. As you can see, we don't have a master yet. We've got to get a master probably from RB Factory to suit our T56, but it does just bolt straight in there. That's pretty much how that's going to go. Uh, yeah, we've got to modify where everything is on the floor so that everything's nice and ergonomically correct to drive properly. But um, yeah, it officially has a clutch pedal. <laughs> So anyway, um, it's getting pretty late, so that's probably going to be about it for today. Uh, but it is awesome to have, actually have this thing sort of started and now it's officially underway. So next big thing is going to get to delete the old motor and gearbox. I'm actually interested to see because I don't know whether the Pintara and the R31 have the same cross member. So that'll be interesting once we get this thing out to just inspect that cross member and see if it's the same. If not, we can flog the one out of the, out of the um, silhouette. It's not a big deal at all. But I'm just interested to actually see whether they're the same setup as far as the cross member and the steering rack goes because I've never, I've heard rumors, but I've never seen for myself. And we will very soon. But anyway, good to have Zach's car. That leak sort of sorted out. Uh, hopefully, tomorrow we get our O2 sensors. We still haven't heard from anyone today. So fingers crossed here tomorrow and we can get Zach's car sorted because then tomorrow's Thursday. So hopefully, you get them and have Zach's car sorted tomorrow so that on Friday, can start on Adam's Crusader and tune that thing. That's the plan at the moment. Hopefully it works out that way. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Smish like, smish subscribe. Um, and we'll see you very shortly again for some more awesome content. Hopefully we can um, continue cracking along with this and have it built very quickly. Once that motor and box is out, it's going to be pretty quick to get the uh, LS and stuff mounted in there. Uh, then we've just got to get a clutch, a few other things. We've got RB Factory is pretty on board with supporting us to sort of get this thing done. So massive thank you to RB Factory for that. He's going to be sending us plenty of gear for it. So if you haven't already, go check out his website. It does heaps of awesome gear for R31s, NS and R, R chassis alike. Awesome pricing. Uh, use the discount code LEP Labs for on checkout for a 10% discount. But yeah, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Catch you later.